welcome to my new yoga space here in Tucson. It's still a works in progress, so I don't have everything set up yet, but this is my personal space where I do my home practice and where I will be recording some of my yoga videos for all of you. So I haven't posted a video in a while. Life's been a little bit crazy, but um, I hope to and plan to do some more shorts for you all um, in the next coming month and two and hopefully beyond. So I'm gonna teach you a setup today that's um, a great restorative pose. We need restorative yoga all the time, but especially as we're here in what I call crazy time season. So this is called Supta Baddha Konasana, Recline Cobbler's Pose. In restorative yoga, it's called Queen's Pose. And I've also heard it called Goddess Pose before. Um, so I'm gonna show you set up with all the fancy props. And then I'm gonna show you set up with things that you likely have in your own home. So if you do happen to have bolsters, blocks, blankets, stuff like that, I can show you that kind of setup. Um, which is really delicious and wonderful and if it's option if it's an option for you it would be great to have these props at home to practice restorative yoga on your own so i have everything already set up but i will break it down for you so baddha konasana cobbler's pose is where the soles of the feet come together and the knees open out wide it can be an active pose it can be a restorative pose and there are many ways to set up this pose. This is my favorite way to do it, the most restorative way, really comfortable, somewhere where I can stay for a long period of time. You may not be able to, but that's what we work toward in our uh, yoga practice and in our restorative practice. So I have a block here underneath my bolster. I have it on the lowest height. There are options to have it higher but I kind of like it lower and I happen to have pretty fat bolsters. Sometimes bolsters aren't quite this round and so it won't be as high up. So you have an option to move that around. If you have a bolster but not a block, you could put a blanket underneath to give it some height. Because these bolsters are really fat for me, I actually put a blanket underneath where I will actually sit on because otherwise this is a pretty big back bend for my body and it's a little too much for me. So that's something that you can play with as well. Most of us will need some sort of support under the head. So when you come into restorative pose, a lot of us are really tight. And so when we come to lie down, the chin is above the forehead. And if that happens, your body can't relax. So you need to be able to adjust and prop the head in appropriate position so that you can relax. So the nervous system will be told not to relax if your chin is higher than your forehead. And then if you come lower, then that's telling your nervous system it's time to relax. So um, it's really easy to make those adjustments to make something much more comfortable and enjoyable. I have lots of yoga props, so I do have two big fat bolsters. So if you don't have a second bolster, you can use a blanket instead. And when I send, show you the second setup, um, you'll understand how the legs can work if you only have one bolster. So if you only have one bolster, I'd recommend using it under your torso. So I'll just set this bolster aside for a moment. And then I come and I sit right in front of my bolster so there's no space between my body and the bolster. If you're a little bit scooched forward, that's also gonna create a bigger back bend and possibly some back pain. So you wedge your sacrum, which is the part of your body that's between the low back and the tailbone. It's a triangular bone. You make that place right up against your bolster. And you bring the soles of your feet together here. And this is a restorative pose, so we don't want to do the biggest uh, hip opener here that we've ever done. So the feet don't have to touch. They can move farther away, which is what I recommend. So this is a way that you could do this pose. And you come to lie down, adjusting so that the blanket is supporting your head and you can relax. This you have to work a little bit here because you're basically holding yourself up. So I'm going to come out of this to add the bolster. I'm gonna put the bolster under my legs and my feet. So here, if I have my knees and legs propped up, my feet don't touch and they likely won't, and they don't really have to. It's this idea I'm still opening, I'm allowing my hips to relax, my legs, my knees, my feet. Still making sure that my sacrum's right up against the bolster, I come 
to lie down on the bolster, arms relaxed down by your sides. For some of you, this is gonna be too high up. Your arms are gonna kind of feel like they're hanging. So putting more blankets under the arms can also be pretty comfortable. That's why I don't like to put my block too high, then I'm more comfortable here. And I can relax in my chest and my shoulders. And then ideally, if you could stay here for at least 10 minutes, that would be great. I typically set a timer and I lay it right on my belly. And then it's easy to find when the, when the timer goes off. I've done restorative yoga before where the phone is somewhere over here and then I can't find it and I'm scrambling for it and then I've kind of lost all of that lovely deliciousness that's just happened. If you have an eye pillow, and of course I just got up in a way I wouldn't recommend. Coming out of a restorative pose, I would always recommend that you roll over to one side so you're keeping your head at a nice level and then slowly come up to seated. If you sit straight up, then you're jarring yourself and kind of like taking all of that awesomeness that's happened in the brain and the mind with the breath, with the body. So we wanna make sure that our transitions are really mindful as much as the poses that we practice. I have eye pillows, so eye pillows can be nice as well. If you don't have an eye pillow, you could use a washcloth just to cover the eyes. The eye pillows are slightly weighted and so you want to make sure if you do have an eye pillow that most of the weight is going to go on your forehead and not your eyeballs. So when the weight um, is on your forehead, it's telling your nervous system that it's time to relax. So it's pulling down just slightly the skin on your forehead and the eyes are covered so it's nice and dark and you can relax in your queen's pose. So typically after I'm in this pose, I'll do a stretch bend my knees, bring my feet to the bolster, roll over to one side. I like to roll over and then press myself back onto the bolster for a moment. Then with the strength of my hands and arms, come up to seated, moving that other bolster out of the way. So I'll show you set up for what you probably typically have at home. You might have blankets like this, which would work, but I'm gonna use what probably most people have, towels. Big bath towels or beach towels, I think are the best option. Let me move this other, these other props out of the way. So it's not as a big opener because the towels just aren't as high, but it's still a possibility. So because my towels aren't very big, I'm gonna stack two together. This is gonna be the bolster that you were lying on or that I was lying on. So I have my towels folded basically in this position and I stack them on top of each other. There's gonna be a nice edge and a ragged edge. So you'll put the ragged edge away from you, so the closer to your head and the nicer edge is what your sacrum's gonna sit up against. Your third towel, you'll open it up to about this position. And then you're gonna roll it. This is gonna be your second bolster. This is what you could use also if you only have one bolster, and then this will be what will support your legs. You'll set that the other end of your mat. Come to sit right here at the edge of the blanket. Bring the soles of the feet together, again, not too close and they don't have to touch. And then you take that rolled blanket Put it on top of the feet and then you tuck the ends in under your calves and then it's supporting your legs and knees come to lie back on your blankets or your towels in your baddha konasana you have the option to take the edge of the towel and make it a pillow if you need more support under your head you also have the option to take two towels and roll them so that one is under each knee, if you need a little more support. How I would come out of this one is I would bring my knees back up, extend my legs out long, stretch whatever feels good, rolling over to one side, coming up to seated. So with the two blankets, if you do that, or two towels or two blankets under your knees, I would roll it this way. So it's a little fatter, so you'd need two. 
and it would support both the knees with a little bit more height if that's what you need. So that's your queen's pose, your supta baddha konasana, your reclined cobbler's pose. If you have any questions, you're welcome to comment below. You can email me, Ann, A-N-N, at gofitgirl.com. You can also visit me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have a great day, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.